Hello, my name is Greg White. I want to take a few moments to talk with you about your patients who might be at risk of suicide and an effective tool you can use to assess their risk. As a mental health professional with over 23 years of experience, I assessed hundreds of suicidal patients and frequently used this tool as part of my treatment plans for keeping them safe. The tool is SLAP, S for specific, L for lethal, A for accessible, or some prefer available, and P for proximity. Let's apply this tool. If you notice your patient's attitude and mood has declined in recent visits, and suspect your patient is depressed and possibly suicidal, talk with your patient about how they are feeling and ask if they've had any suicidal thoughts or feelings. If they endorse any such thoughts or feelings, start with the S in SLAP. How specific are their suicidal thoughts? Are they fleeting or formidable ideas? Has the patient thought out details about how, when, or where? For instance, have they thought of a particular time, place, deadline, or an anniversary of some sort? The more the patient has thought through specific details, the greater the risk. Let me give you a quick example. I worked with a 45-year-old white male who attempted to hang himself with a sheet and was very nearly successful in doing so. After the incident, a suicide note was found, which opened with the line, Well, here it is, the day I have been looking for for a year. I got married on this day one year ago. He and his wife were separated at the time, and he had decided to end his life on their wedding anniversary. Let's move on to the L and the A in SLAP. How lethal is the method that the patient has been thinking of, and how readily can they access the means? Have they thought of using a gun, or hanging, or poisoning? It's important for you to know that these three methods combine make up over 90% of all suicides. If your patient has thought of using a gun, find out if they own one or have easy access to one. Then ask them if they have any safeguards that can be implemented to either remove the gun from their home or deter them from accessing one. Another quick example. I assessed a 55-year-old white male who had a loaded gun when making a suicide threat to his wife. When I met with him, he reported that his wife had threatened a divorce, so he grabbed his gun, made the suicide threat to see whether she meant it or not. In the end, he denied any and all intent to kill himself to me and wanted to keep his job, stay in touch with his children, move out of his house to stay with a friend and follow up with counseling. When I talked with him about his gun ownership, he told me he would give them to a friend who would lock them up for him. So he was able to provide me with a reasonable plan for his safety going forward. Finally, there's the P in SLAP, proximity of help. Where does the patient live and with whom? Do they have a support system involving family, friends, religious organizations, or professionals? Do they live rurally, possibly miles and hours away from resources? Or do they live in a metropolitan area where more resources are readily available? The fewer the immediate resources for the patient, the higher the risk. Conversely, the closer the proximity of help, the greater the odds for intervention. Have a colleague in your corner who specializes in suicide risk and who can work with you to ensure a safe and clinically sound outcome for your patient. Thank you for watching. I hope that you have found this information useful and I wish you all the best in your important work of keeping your patients alive and well. Mm -hmm.